Hi, I'm Damien, and this is the third video in a series of videos in which we'll be learning how to code. Before we move on with today's business, let's take a quick recap over what we learned the last time. In the second part, we learned about lists and how we can work with them and how they are useful. So let's see what we're talking about today. Here we have a list, it's called x. We have a variable called x in which we are holding a list. This list holds all of the numbers from 1 to 5. We can add elements to the list by using the function append. When you use the function append, you always add elements to the back of the list. So if we say x.append6, we will be we will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in our list. Uh, we, we can also um, do some really clever stuff with lists. Um, and what I mean by that is we can go through each element of the list and then perform a certain operation over each element and then return a new list all in one line. And you can see this right here. If you haven't seen the last part and you don't know what these things, I suggest you go watch it. It would be a lot easier. <laughs> okay, so if we run this, what do we expect to see? First, because we are printing here, before we do anything to x, we expect to see x as it is, the numbers 1 to 5. If we print after we append, um, we append the number 6, we expect to see the number 6 at the end of the list. And because i, what, would, what, do we, what will we have in, uh, in y? We'll have an array that we get after going through each element in x and adding 2 to each element. So we uh, so instead of having 1 all the way up to 6, we expect to have 3 all the way up to 8. Now, let's check if it works. So let's see. First we have x. Yeah, that's correct. Then we have x with 6 appended to it and then with all of the elements increased by 2. Okay, so that looks fine. So, I really hope you understood the last part and I hope you, this was a quick reminder so, and you didn't forget what you learned last time. And let's see what we're talking about today. So, today's topic, functions. As you saw, we can use functions like append or you can, we can use functions like print to do things. Um, but why do we use functions? We use functions because we, we have a piece of code that we need in multiple places in our program, but we don't want to rewrite that piece of code multiple times everywhere where we need it. So that's why we use functions. It's a clever way of reducing the size of the code. Of uh, Also, it makes it a lot more easier to understand the code and to read the code because uh, you, will, you won't always write programs from scratch. You might also start working on a program on a program after somebody already created it and you will need to read and understand that code. And by using functions, you can, um, you can understand it way more easily. Okay, so first, first, how do we define a function? Well, the keyword for defining functions is def, def. So whenever you want to define a function, you need to, do, to write def, def, then the name of the function that you want to define. So let's say we want, let's say we want a function that will print whatever we give it. So let's say, let's call it my print. It will be my function of print. If we do this, we, we don't have anything to write inside of it. We can't write anything because we don't have anything to work with. Whenever you call a function, if you want it to, um, to work with some data, to process some data, you need to pass some parameters. If you, if you look right here on the seventh line, if we print hello world, the parameter passed to print to the print function is the string hello world. So print has some parameters. Not, not only does it have these parameters, you can add more parameters by splitting them, by dividing them with a comma. So we need to also say, to also define the parameters of the function that 
uh, that we want to define. So because we have my print, we want to do to print whatever we give it. So let's say we print X. Let's say we want to print X. Well, we can just say print X. And if we go and say my print of hello world, whoops, yep, and run it, it will print hello world as expected. How does it do, how does it do it? Well, we defined it here, but we call it here. You call a function that you define the same way you would call any other function. So we pass the parameter hello world. This value, the string hello world, is then taken and it is assigned to the parameter x right here. And then we can use x inside of our function just as if we would define x right here. It, it would be the same thing as if we would have defined it right here. So that's the basics of writing a function. Let's write a more um, a different function. Let's write a, a function that takes a number and doubles that number. So um, so let's say something like my double because it's my function of doubling it, and it also takes. Um, it also takes a, uh, a one parameter because we want to double only one number, so we can uh, have only one uh, parameter. So let's say we want to double it. Well, we will take a second variable, 2 times x, because we want to double it. What, what will this do? Well, when we call this function, we will pass one parameter to it and then create another another variable and assign it the double of the value stored in that variable. So if we pass 10, that value 10, to my double, we will have 2 times 10, which is equal to 20, stored in y. But because it is stored in y, does it mean that we can also say print my double of 10. What does this do? Well, printing this returns none. It prints none. In, in Python, the keyword none means nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, in other languages, you might, find, uh, you might find null. It is the same thing. So in Python, we have none. But why does it print that? Because in my double, in our function that we defined, we got y to be the value of 2 times x, but then we don't have anything else going on. We need to return a value. We need to return y. Because we are working with the value of x and we want to process it in some way so that whenever, whenever we call this function, we will get something back from it we get we need to get the double of the value that we pass we need to get the double of it so to get the value you we use the keyword return so in this case it will be return y now if we print it we get 20 as expected but we can do it even uh, even easier we don't need a, an auxiliary variable like y to um to make the calculations. We can just say return 2 times x. And it's still 20. It will still work. We don't need another variable because, um, because since we only want to double the number, all we have to do is return this because first, <clears throat> because we need to uh, keep in mind the order in which operations are executed. And here it is. So the first, th the first thing that will happen in this function is that the value of x will be, uh, when we call the function right here with the parameter 10, what will happen? Well, the value of 10 will be put into x and then the code will start running, the code inside of the function. And since it is only one line, here's how this line will be executed. First, this 
math operation will be evaluated to its value, which will be two times the value stored in x, which is 20, which is 10, sorry, in x. So x stores 20 and two times 10, uh, x stores 10 and two times 10 is 20. So this math operation will be evaluated to 20. And then after that, it will be like, uh, it will be replaced here. And instead of saying return two times 10, it will be like saying return 20. So that's why we get 20. But let's take it one step further. Let's um, write a function that returns the divisors of a number. So b before we start writing it, let's make sure what are, what are the divisors. So let's say we have, we, let's take the number 10 and the, the divisors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. The numbers that divide 10 perfectly. So what, what, what we need is that we want to take all of the numbers that can be, uh, that are the divisors of X. That's what we want to return. Well, we could, we could take this kind of approach, but let's try it. Let's try it first and see what, what we get. So for I in range, we want to take each number from one all the way up to num the number x. So we will be going to from one to 10 to x plus one, sorry. So we'll go from one to x plus one and check if that number, that number i is a divisor of x. And if it is a divisor of x, we will return that number because it is a divisor of x. So to check, we'll, we'll say if x mod i is equal to zero, return i. Now we can, we can print the result. So let's say we, we, let's check with 10. Let's say, let's see if we get the divisors, the divisors of 10 this way. If we print this, we will only get one. But let's see why we get only one as the result. Let's go back into the code and check. So let's let's assume that x is equal to 10. So we will be going from for each number i in the range 1 to 10. We will check if the if 10 can be divided perfectly with i. And if it and if so, we have we return that number. This seems logical because that's what we want. We need to return the divisors of the number. However, whenever you return from a function, you end its execution. So because we're, we are in a loop right here, we, we do not, uh, the, for, the for loop doesn't run 10 times as intended from one to 10. It will only run once because it first assigns the value of one to i. So in the first iteration of the for loop, i will have the value of one. And we will check if 10 mod i mod one is equal to zero, which it is, it will return that number i, which is one. So it will return one. And because it returns one, it ends the function execution. And therefore we don't get any other number after one. So instead, instead, what we want to do is we need to get an array to make a list. So we can call it L and, call, and let, we can call it, uh, we can uh, take an empty list. And instead of returning I, we can just say L dot append I. And at the end, at the end of the function, right after the for loop is completed, we can just say return L. Now, if we print it, we get one, two, five, and 10 as expected. So this is why we did what we did. Um, now we can try, and you can also try um, to uh, solve it in a one-liner type of code. So, um, so you you could actually instead of saying return l you could say return and then do something right here 
four i in x in range one to x plus one. So you could write it like this in only one line. You could do this, but I will let you do this. I will let you try it and I will uh, solve it in the next video. So until then, let's move on. The last thing we'll be doing in this video is making is by making another function that that uh, would have been useful in the previous video. In the previous video, we did a program. Uh, we created a program that checks uh, that prints all of the numbers that are prime from uh, from one to a certain number n that we would enter with uh, from the console. So let's define our own function to check if a number is prime. Def is prime of x. This function will return the value of true if x is prime and the value of false if x is not prime. How do we do this? Well, we need to we need to again we need to check to make a simple check if x is equal to 1 we will straight return false right off the bat because because 1 is not a prime number if x is equal to 2 we'll say true and and we can also say we can also write if x is equal to 3 return true, true just just because we want um, we want to make it a bit uh, easier okay so before uh, after that we can check all of the numbers from uh, this time we can check all of the numbers from 4 all the way up to um, we can check if the numbers if uh, X has any other divisors other than one and itself by going through all of the numbers from two all the way up to uh, x so all the way up to x without x so all the way up to x minus one and if x mod that number i is equal to zero so if i is a divisor of x we need to return false now let's see why we do this so remember the condition of a number being prime for a number to be prime it needs to have only one only two divisors sorry only two divisors one and itself any other number between one and itself that divides that number perfectly would result in that number not being the initial number not being a prime number so if we get if we check all of the numbers from 2 to x minus 1 includes including x minus 1 and we find any number that is that can divide x perfectly then that number is not uh, is not a prime number and we can return false directly and be, and we can return false and because of that this the execution of the entire function will uh, end right here so for instance let's say we would uh, we would uh, return we would pass the number 4 to the function is prime well because of because the number is uh, the argument is 4 the parameter is 4 these functions will this uh, these lines of code will not run because x will not be on any of these numbers. So we will be going straight into this line, into these lines. So for i in range two to three, we will only will will be going from two to x minus one. So that will be from two to three. We will check if x mod i is zero. So for mod two is zero. And it's on the first iteration of the for loop. So then, because mod times uh, mod, uh, sorry, for mod two is zero, we can just return false right off the bat. But what if we don't find any other number that uh, divides that number perfectly? What if we don't find a divisor between two and x? Well, that means the number is prime. So because the the number is prime, we can just return true. 
Now let's check with uh, some numbers. Print is prime of four. First, we wanted to check with four. And four is not the prime number, so we expect it to get false. Let's check with 10 and 13 and 21. So 4, 10 and 21, they are not prime and we get the correct results and 13 is a prime number which we get um, for which we get the value of true from is prime. So everything works perfectly. That's all I have for you today. I only wanted to show you how to use functions and why we use functions and we will be getting into a bit more difficult things in the next one as we always do. I hope you like this video and if you care about watching more of this kind of videos like share or whatever I don't know subscribe if you want to um, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day.